All right, this is Circular Solve Safety with Mr. Timchek. Let's go. All right, the Circular Saw. It's also referred to as the Skill Saw. Many times it's called that because that was the original maker of the Circular Saw. Here's one here, and there's the Skill Saw brand. They were the first one to make it, so people just call them Skill Saws. Um, but the trick. The actual term for it is circular saw. So if someone says skill saw, that means circular saw. No big deal. The circular saw can make pretty much any cut except for um, curve cuts. Um, but they're mainly used for cross cuts, which is just cutting against the wood, uh, across the wood. But it can also rip, miter, make bevel cuts, everything. All right. But the circular saw is usually not used for uh, trim carpentry or anything like that. It's mainly to cut a dimensional lumber like two by fours or sheet goods like plywood. All right, look at the old skill saw there. All right, so there's two main different types of circular saws. There's the ones that we have down in our shop called the sidewinders. They have the, or also called direct drive. It has a motor right to the side of it. All right, and then it's good to go. For left-handed people, um, there are varieties that have the blade on the left side, all right? So I actually prefer the blade on the left side, but most of the sidewinders have a blade on the right side. The most common size blade is a seven and a quarter blade. All right, trim circular saws are the, the smaller ones. Uh, like we have in the shop, they're battery powered. The blades on the left, they have a six and a half inch blade. They're lighter, easier to carry. They're kind of handy to have. But generally, sometimes they're not as powerful, but the new ones are. But they're just nice and light and uh, pretty much do everything that a seven and a quarter can do. Then you have the worm drive circular saws. Um, they have a motor directly behind the blade, um, well, it's off to the side and behind. It has worm gears in it. That's why it's got a worm drive, and these worm gears create a lot of torque. And it's a little bit different motor style, a um, lot of power, but the thing about these, they're heavy. What I like about them is that they have a blade to the left. Makes it handy that way. Um, these gears, though, do need to get lubricated every once in a while. It's just like changing oil in your car. And the blade size is usually about seven and a quarter. There's all kinds of circular saws out there. Uh, there's beam saws that have kind of like a chainsaw type um, blade uh, that you can use for really big stuff. These are another uh, timber saws. You can, this is a 16 and a quarter inch uh, size blade on that. And you can cut really big lumber, like six by sixes in one shot. Um, you know, here's a size of, that's a regular circular saw. Look at the size of this thing. You know, there's another big beam saw. Um, you got to watch out when you're using those things. But there's all kinds of shapes and sizes of circular saws. And this is just uh, another comparison. This is a sidewinder. Motor's right next to it. This is more popular here. In the eastern United States, but the western United States, the worm drive is more popular. Here's the parts. You have the trigger handle. Sometimes the trigger has a safety right here uh, above it. Um, blade, obviously, blade guard that springs into action, into place, and kind of moves when you go through the material. A height adjust adjustment with you for your blade, bevel adjustment, and then your shoe or base plate. All right, so that's how you bevel it. Uh, circular saws only bevel one way, and then you have your shoe. All right, that rests on the workbench. All right, that is just another picture of the exact ones that we have down in the shop. Same type of thing. All right, make sure that the blade guard works. It should uh, spring into action. All right, see how it's a little bit, um, you know, curved there. It's meant to hit the workpiece and gradually go. All right, just like this picture is showing. All right, should be nice and springy. These. All right, our pictures of what not to do with your circular saw. The, the guard's removed here, and this one has the guard pinned up. All right, on these two. You don't want to have that. That guard should be down always because that thing is pretty dangerous. 
I uh, just have the spinning blade out there. All right, before changing the blade, make sure you unplug it. Um, when you change it, you don't want to over tighten the nut, but you want to make sure it's uh, tight enough once you put the new blade on. Um, make sure that the blade that you're using isn't bent or dull or missing any teeth. All right, a dull blade is a dangerous blade. You want to make sure it has all its teeth and it's cutting right. Um, make sure you use the right blade for the task. If you're just ripping through two by fours and doing a lot of work, use a framing uh, blade. It's going to be a rougher cut, but you can cut faster. This is right here with a lot more teeth. It has a finer finish to it. Uh, not a lot of little fraying edges, but you're going to, um, it's going to be a little slower. All right. Setting your depth should be about a quarter inch to a half inch below the work surface. I like to say about a tooth below. Any uh, lower and it's going to bind. So be aware of that. So that tooth got to be about a quarter inch lower than the workpiece. That's how you, that's the depth lever there. That's how you change it. All right, by a quarter inch lower, you can see it. That's about um, how much lower from the workpiece that you need to be. All right, to make notch cuts, you can just, with the saw and plug, you can just measure how far your blade down and then it'll only cut that far and then you could just make a bunch of cuts and then you're good to go. Notch cuts are popular in all kinds of construction, especially deck construction or rough framing. A notch cut is a great way that you can send your um, supporting boards, all right, so all the weight is transfer, uh, transferred onto this post, all right. Everything that's resting on here is then transferred onto your post, which is what you want. All right, then you're going to make a bevel cut. All you got to do is loosen the screw, and then that's your angle adjustment there, uh, angle finer there. It usually doesn't have, like, a bunch of tick, tick marks for every little angle, but uh, there's enough of them that you can guess. All right, some of them have uh, better... Depth uh, bubble capacities, but most of them go at least to 50 degrees. And you can see a circular saw making a bevel cut right there. All right, the biggest thing is supporting the workpiece. You want to have, like, if you have two horses there, you want to be cutting over here. You don't want to be cutting the middle, because if you cut in the middle, it's going to pinch, bog down, and come flying back at you. All right, when ripping plywood, make sure the entire piece is supported. Grab a couple scrap two by fours or something like that, or we just use the saw horses, and because you can cut right on the saw horses. All right, you can get a straight edge, or you can kind of cut freehand. Straight edge is kind of nice if you want a nice, uh, clean rip or cross cut. Always wear safety glass when you're operating it. Um, start the circular saw slightly away from it. You never want to start the blade when it's touching the wood. Um, Keep both hands on the saw. Never put your hands underneath the saw. That's just good practice. Some people like to hold the board, and you can't see your entire uh, hand you, or your fingers when you're holding a board, and then you don't want to uh, accidentally cut them uh, and get in the blade's path. All right, keep both hands on the saw. You'll be fine. Always let the saw get up to full speed before you get in, and keep the saw very straight on your line without any twists. Never force the saw into material. If the saw does get pinched, let off the trigger. All right, wait till it stops going and then remove the saw. Don't continue that same cut. Never back out of a cut and you'll be good. Follow your cut line. If you deviate, shut the saw off and then re-enter your cut. The saw will kick back if you keep forcing it into a pinch situation or if you're trying to force it back on the line. It's for straight cuts. It's not meant to do any kind of curved cuts. Never hold anything like this. Make sure you put both hands on the saw. All right. Make sure the material is properly supported. Um, make sure that the blade is sharp. And the kickback hopefully will not happen to you. All right. Some circular saws have what you call a blade break and it stops right away. But most of our circular saws do not have that. So when you let off the trigger, the blade still spins for a little bit. 
you don't want to put the saw down when it's still spinning. So watch out for that. All right, circular saws can be used to make a depth cut, but uh, we're generally not going to do that. All right, circular saws make a lot of dust when cutting. Um, they do come with blowers on it that you can blow the dust off, and that's just something bonus that, that they do. So that is the circular saw.